Welcome to the second lecture of the first week of Open Computational Gastronomy course. Computational Gastronomy is an emerging data science of food, flavors, and health. Let me extend the definition that I had presented in the last class for Computational Gastronomy a little bit. Computational Gastronomy is a data science that blends food, data, and computation for data-driven food innovations. Now, this is a new angle that I'm bringing in here. And in the next class, we shall in fact be discussing what are the various data-driven food innovations that one can think about having got a blend of food with data and computation. As I see it, food has magical qualities. Creating delicious recipe dishes by processing raw natural ingredients is nothing short of wizardry. Cooking is a uniquely human endeavor which is suggested to be responsible for the evolution of big brains in humans. So much so that it is considered the very essence of being human. In his book, Catching Fire, Richard Rangam argues that for, that for the central role of the cooking that makes us human. Humans have evolved over millions of years as one of the most dominant species on the face of the earth. Over time, as we acquired enhanced cognitive abilities, we have also ended up developing a lifestyle that makes us vulnerable to diseases such as obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disorders. While we may blame our genes, our social circles, and sedentary work profiles for the rise of this epidemic of lifestyle disorders, diet is an important factor contributing towards these health issues. Knowing the central role of food to many modern health problems, experts have attempted to associate positive and negative impacts of food on human health without much convergence. The interaction between our body, the food, leading to and the food, leading to health consequences is way too complex, giving rise to inconclusive and often contradictory assertions. I believe that taking data-centric and evidence-driven view of food is the key to leveraging food for better health. With this idea, I would like to present our investigations of Indian cuisine in search of patterns and future directions for personalized dietary recommendations. Such data-driven studies are opening new avenues for using food as medicine. We started out by asking a very simple question. Why do we eat what we eat? What we eat on a day-to-day -day basis is dictated by traditional dietary practices crystallized as elaborate cooking procedures, the recipes. This question then gets transformed into why we combine ingredients in our recipes the way we do. Now that's an interesting question to ask. One of the possible answers to this question is known as the food pairing principle. Ingredients which taste similar tend to be used together in traditional recipes. That's what the principle states. This implies that the traditional recipes have evolved to combine ingredients that are uniform in taste, similar in taste. To investigate the food pairing pattern in Indian cuisine, we extracted data of traditional recipes from across different regions of India. These data comprised of more than 2,500 recipes that are composed of around 200 odd ingredients from different categories, vegetables, herbs and spices, plant, uh, plants, nuts and dairy products, etc. Ingredients are used in recipes based on their flavor and the flavor of ingredients arises primarily from how we taste and smell it through the gustatory and olfactory sensory mechanisms that are triggered by the flavor molecules. The pungency of onions and spiciness of chilies is due to their flavor profile. So we extracted the information of flavor molecules found in each of these ingredients used in the Indian recipes to begin with. Thus, 
Each ingredient now is represented by a bunch of flavor molecules that characterize its unique taste and smell. Having obtained the data of recipes, ingredients and their flavor profiles, now food pairing becomes a measurable quantity. Each of the traditional Indian recipes was dissected into its constituent ingredients to compute its food pairing. The average number of flavor molecules among all pairs of ingredients in a recipe as shown in this illustration. The, this number represents the extent of flavor profile overlap among all ingredient pairs in a recipe. When averaged over all recipes, this number quantifies average food pairing across the whole cuisine. Food pairing is an objective measure that captures the molecular essence, the intuitive uniqueness of a cuisine. Similar to variations in regional languages, cultures across the world have evolved variations in the way they cook, variations in the way they combine ingredients to form recipes, the unique mold that characterizes a cuisine. Notice that in the absence of cultural, climatic and other influences, the recipes would have been combined in a completely random fashion to create a random cuisine. I like to call it a monkey cuisine. Consistent with the food pairing hypothesis, it has been shown that many Western cuisines such as North American, Latin American, Eastern and Southern European cuisines indeed are characterized with a uniform food pairing phenomena. These cuisines tend to blend ingredients that are similar in their taste and smell. On the contrary, studies from our lab have shown that Indian cuisine is characterized by a contrasting food pairing pattern. This essentially means that Indian recipes tend to pair ingredients that have distinct molecular uh, character and this probably could be one of the reasons for their unique taste. We found that contrasting food pairing is a general phenomena across all regional cuisines, a quintessential feature of Indian recipes. It seems that despite diverse culinary styles, there is an underlying similarity across regional cuisines of India. Further, we wanted to find the contribution of each ingredient category towards the observed food pairing phenomena. For this, we randomize the recipes one category at a time. For example, to find how important a specific vegetable in recipes is, we randomly shuffled every vegetable with any one of the vegetables from the basket of all vegetables that were available. The figure shows you the food pairing pattern in the Indian cuisine and the level at which the random cuisine, the monkey cuisine lies. We found that such random shuffling that we did, let's say across vegetables, affects food pairing pattern only marginally for most categories like those of fruit, plant derivatives, nuts and seeds, cereal and crop, etc. Barring for one category and you can guess that category in the context of Indian cuisine that happens to be spice. Random shuffling of spices in recipes with other spices disturbs the food pairing pattern significantly. This suggests that spices form the molecular fulcrum of the Indian cuisine. Chef suggests that such unique positioning of spices is in fact critical for the taste of a recipe. Going further, we quantified ingredients for their contribution towards increasing or decreasing the food pairing. Among the top contribute contribution to the molecular contrast, the majority are spices. Cayenne, capsicum, ginger, garlic, coriander, tamarind, clove, cinnamon and some spice combinations. These key spices provide the basis of food pairing in Indian cuisine. Why food pairing is a simple measure of molecular combination in recipes, I am tempted to link it to the taste. 
although I must warn that sensation of taste is a complex phenomena involving a myriad of interlinked molecular mechanisms and hence this suggestion needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. By mining an array of patterns in recipes, we have proposed culinary fingerprints of cuisines that present us with quintessential features that characterize a regional cuisine. Such fingerprints could be of value for understanding culturally inbuilt test preferences of a population. Our data-driven discovery of this unique contrasting food pairing has been adjusted as an emerging technology by the MIT Technology Review. Like knowing the law of gravity has allowed us to predict eclipses and to launch satellites into the space, I believe that such data-driven investigations of food will take us closer to developing divergent applications for food, nutrition and health. Our work has received much attention from both media as well as academia. Other than the MIT technology, technology review, among the other notable media focus or for, for our research have been by the Washington Post, the National Public Radio, the Times of India and the Hindu. I was also invited as a guest of honor at the 7th International Chefs Congress to speak on the topic of the science of Indian cuisine. Having our research highlighted on the cover of Science Reporter was another high point. For me, the Niskare magazine Science Reporter has been one of the windows to contemporary science, economical and easily available in a small town that I grew up. Recently, our research was highlighted by the popular food critic Veer Sangvi in his Rude Food column. Computational gastronomy is the data-driven future of the food and has largely been received with much optimism. What started as a serendipitous question asked in a classroom of complex networks at IIT Jodhpur in 2014 has reached a point where it has a name, computational gastronomy, and is considered to be the sweet spot that blends food with data and the power of computational techniques. So this is my journey, a personal journey, the story that begun with, uh, that is the beginning of computational gastronomy. So let's meet uh, in the third and the last class of this week, in the next class, uh, to discuss how to leverage computational gastronomy for data-driven food innovations. Till then, goodbye. Feel free to recommend the Open Computational Gastronomy course to those interested in this exciting journey of food. Don't forget to look at the notes, the video, as well as uh, other reading material that is being shared to you on the Google Classroom.